In our last video, we talked about finding a critical player. And we said that a critical player is someone who must be present in a winning coalition in order to, um, for that person to remain a winning coalition or for that group to remain a winning coalition. And that brings us to this idea of bands off power. Our goal is to calculate an actual percentage of power or an actual way to quantify how much power someone has to put an actual assigned number to it. And Bansoff says, a player's power is proportional, that means it's a percentage, to the number of coalitions for which that player is critical. The more often a player is critical, the more power he holds. So what we're going to do in order to calculate the bands off power indexes. We're going to follow a series of steps. Now over here on the right is an example that is already done in um, this orange block here. So it says example 5, 3, 2, 2. So I know I have a quota of 5 and it says which player has the most power. From a bands off point of view, the first thing you're going to do, step one, is you're going to make a list of all winning coalitions. I don't care about losing coalitions, I only want winning coalitions. So you need to consider how many ways people could actually vote together first, how many coalitions there are. So in a group of three, you could vote individually, one, two, or three. You could vote in groups of two, one and two, one and three, two and three. You could also have the grand coalition, which is one, two, three. And if I go through, I know that player one, player two, and player three, neither of the, none of these people have enough votes to um, meet the quota by themselves. No one is a dictator, so I need to look on at two players. One and two have five votes. That's a winning coalition. One and three have five votes. That's a winning coalition. But two and three only have four, so that's a loss. One, two, and three, the grand coalition has seven. But the grand coalition technically should always be a winning coalition because the uh, quota can never be more than our total. So it's impossible for the grand coalition to lose. All right, so here are my winning coalitions. That's step one. Step two, I am going to determine which players in each of these coalitions are critical. And you need to note them in some way. You need to circle them, underline them, highlight them, something to make them stand out. So I'm going to take these three coalitions and I'm going to recopy them, or the it's already recopied, down here. And just to make my life a little easier, I'm going to copy this because when I scroll down, I'm going to lose that picture. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to figure out in these coalitions which players are critical. So when one, two. One, two has a total vote of five. That's exactly the quota. So if any player drops out, that means that we are going to have a losing coalition. So player one and player two are both critical. With player one and player three, again, their votes add up to exactly five. So if either of these guys decide to say no or change their mind, my votes are going to drop below the quota. One, two, and three, however, add up to seven. So if I take out player one, two and three only have four votes. That's not enough to meet the quota, or that becomes a losing coalition. So player one is critical to that win. If I take out player one, I don't have a winning coalition anymore. Circle him. If I take out player two, player one and player three still have five votes. That's enough to meet the quota. If they can meet the quota without player two, it means that player two is not critical. If player two is not critical, you're not going to circle him or highlight him or underline him, whatever you've decided to do. And if player two isn't critical, then player three isn't going to be critical either because they have the same number of votes. So here are my critical players, player one and two in the first coalition, one and three in the second coalition, and player one in the third coalition. That brings me now to step three. In step three, what I want to do is I want to count the number of times that each player is critical. So I am looking at this and I see that I have um, underlined player one or circled player one three times and I've circled player two one time and I've circled player three one time. Okay, And Banzoff says that the percentage of power you have is a proportion of how many times you're critical. So what I need to do is I need to take these times up and I need to add them together. This is five total circles that we made. To find someone's bands off power index now, all you have to do is take and make a percentage of step three divided by step four, where I'm taking the total number of times a player is critical. I want to say that player one, or the bands off power index for player one, is three out of five they were circled three out of the five total circles. Or in other words, that's 60%. Player two was circled one out of the five times. So player two has a bands off power index of 20%. And player three was circled one out of five times. So he has a bands off 
power distribution of 20%. So I can look at this now and actually I have a quantifiable amount of power now. I know that player two and player three are equal in power. And up here, that makes sense because they're equal in votes. I also know that player one is three times as powerful as player two even though up above he only has one and a half times as many votes. So we can actually have numbers on these. These are things that we can compare. This is called the Banzoff Power Index, three out of five, one out of five, one out of two. And usually we refer to the Banzoff Power Distribution as the percentage that is associated with that. So remember to find a percentage, you take top divided by bottom, multiply by 100 and get that percent. Let's go ahead and find the Banzoff Power Index for this weighted voting system or the bands off power distribution that goes with it. So the first thing I want to do, step one, is to find all of my winning coalitions. I notice there are three players, so I'm going to start off by writing out all the possible coalitions. I know that I could have player one, player two, or player three by themselves. I also know there could be groups of two. Player one and player two could vote together. Player one and player three could vote together. Player two and player three could vote together. And I could have the grand coalition of player one, player two, and player three. These are all the subsets of my three players. Okay, there's no other way we could group these together except for perhaps to say the empty set, and obviously that would be a losing coalition. So step two, I'm going to go through and I'm going to mark off, sorry, step one still, I'm finding my winning coalitions. I'm going to mark off all my losing coalitions. Losing coalitions would be coalitions that can't meet that 101. So obviously, player one, player two, and player three. No one is a dictator, so no one can meet the quota on their own. One and two put together have plenty of votes to meet the quota. One and three have plenty of votes to meet the quota. Two and three add up to exactly 101. That's still a winning coalition. So winning, winning, winning. One, two, and three, the grand coalition is always a winner. So I have four winning coalitions. Step two, look for critical players. We're going to take time and subtract them out one at a time. If I take out player one, player two drops below the quota. So player one is critical. If I take out player two, player one only has 99 votes. That's a loss. So player two is critical. In fact, because I know that nobody can win by themselves, anytime you have a group of two, both people have to be there for that to stay a winning coalition. And you wanted to go through individually, you could. That would be fine. How about the last coalition? If I take out player one, can two and three win? Sure can. That adds up to 101. So they don't need player one. If they don't need player one, he's not critical. If player one isn't critical, then player two and player three won't be critical either. So while we circled everybody in the first three winning coalitions, there aren't any critical players in this last coalition. Next, I'm going to add up how many circles I made. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there are six total critical players, six total circles. And that means I'm going to go through and give everyone a percentage out of six. Player one is something out of six. And player two is something out of six. And player three is something out of six. Okay. So one, one, two, two out of six. One, two, two out of six. And one, two, two out of six. So each player was circled two out of the six times. That's one third or 33 and a third percent. So this is very interesting because what this tells me is that these three players, according to Banzoff, are equally powerful. Equally powerful. Equal. Same amount of power. But when you look at their votes, that's not what's represented at all. 99, 98, and 3. Imagine you were going to buy a TV and you chipped in $99, your best friend chipped in $98, and your other best friend chipped in $3. You wouldn't expect him to have the same amount of control over that television as you did. He only put in $3. You put on almost 100 but yet, according to this quota, because of the nature of this quota and because of the nature of this weighted voting system, he, everybody has equal power. So somebody contributing $3 or buying three stocks is the same as somebody contributing 99 So what this tells me is that because the percentage of votes is so far off of the percentage of power, this is a very poorly constructed weighted voting system. This was not thought out very well. The number of votes do not truly represent the power of each player. Okay. Next example. Okay, this time I'm going to go through and try to find the bands off power distribution for four, three, two, and one. So I'm going to start off player one, player two, and player three. 
we could have player one and player two, player one and player three, or player two and player three. We could also have one, two, and three. And the first thing we're going to do after we write them all down is we're going to cross off the losers. Nobody can win on their own. One and two only adds up to, or sorry, adds up to five. That's a win. One and three adds up to four. That's a win. Two and three only adds up to three. That's a loss. I'm going to cross them off. One, two, and three is always a win, always the grand coalition. Next, I'm going to look for critical players. Critical players, if you, I know nobody can win on their own, so if you're in a group of two, both of you have to be there. In the grand coalition, if I take out player one, two and three only have three combined votes together. That's not enough to meet the quota, so player one is critical. If I take out player two, one and three only have four votes. That's that's enough to meet the quota. They don't need player two. And if they don't need player two, they're not going to need player three because he has less votes than player two. This is all my critical players now. I add them up. One, two, three, four, five. There are five total. Okay. So I'm going to go over for the Banzoff power index, and I'm going to give everyone a fraction out of that five. Player one is something out of five. Player two is something out of five. And player three is something out of five. So one, two, three. Player one was circled three out of the five times, so he has 60% of the power. Player two was circled once, and player three was circled once. Each of those show 20% of the power. And if you think back to the very beginning of class today, or the very beginning of this video, um, these numbers look really familiar. These are the exact same power structure numbers when we did five, three, two, and two. Okay. I had the same power, I had the same winning coalitions even. Okay? What that tells me is that these two weighted voting systems, even though they have different numbers, are equivalent. Okay? If you have two weighted voting systems that are equivalent, that means that they have the same winning coalitions. And the same critical players. So two equivalent voting systems have the same winning coalitions. Okay, We had the winner, winner, winner. Those are the same coalitions that won with 5, 3, 2, 2. So we can consider these weighted voting systems equivalent, just like we could if we had two fractions. Um, 4 out of 6 is the same as 2 out of 3. Okay, They don't look the same, but in all, for all intents and purposes, they have equivalent weighted voting systems. They mean the same thing. There is one more video, part 3.